Hello, everyone, and welcome to France 24's daily roundup of all the latest action from the Africa Cup of Nations. Pre-tournament favourite Senegal played out a disappointing goal of stalemate with Guinea, while Morocco are the second team through to the last 16 after a 2-0 win against Comoros. Let's start with the second round of matches in Group C. Gabon are one step closer to the last 16 after clawing back a late goal against Ghana to clinch a one-all draw and an all-important point. Ghana went ahead in the 18th minute, but that was cancelled out by a goal just before the final whistle, where there was some controversy as Gabon failed to return the ball after it had been put out for a Black Stars injury. For more on that result, let's cross to our sports editor Simon Harding in the capital Yaoundé. Good evening to you, Simon. Ghana's hopes of qualifying for the last 16 are in the balance after losing out on those three points uh, at the last minute this evening. You're absolutely right, Selena. Ghana will now have to beat Comoros Islands in their final game to ensure that they reach uh, the last 16. And all of this because of this very controversial uh, Gabon goal in what was a feisty encounter here at the Aijo Stadium in Yaoundé. Now, um, captain of the Black Stars, uh, uh, Andre Ayou, put them ahead with a phenomenal strike uh, inside uh, the first half. But afterwards, Ghana really struggled to dictate any sort of tempo to create any clear-cut chances. In fact, it was Gabon who started becoming more and more threatening as the game went on until that fateful uh, moment where Ghana had a man down, the ball not given back to the Black Stars and Jim Alavina of Clermont in the Ligue 1 scoring a wonderful equaliser shot across the face of goal which finished in the bottom corner. Now the Black Star players, management, staff all rushed the referee with a scuffle breaking out at the end of the match between both sets of players. It must be said that Gabon did celebrate almost uh, provokingly in front of uh, the Ghana players. Uh, but of course, uh, that result stands. There was a dismissal as well for Ghana substitute uh, Tetsi. Uh, but it leads Ghana in a very, very delicate position. Um, a win and four points should be enough to see them qualify as one of the best third-place teams. For Gabon, of course, they'll now play against Morocco and they'll play against Morocco to see who finishes first in Group C. That's right, Simon. And of course, uh, this evening with Gabon, there was a notable absentee this evening with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang out again. Uh, there was some hope yesterday he would be playing after recovering from COVID. There was hope that uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang uh, would uh, play. In fact, it was almost guaranteed that he would make the starting 11 because Gabon did uh, miss uh, his attacking flair in their win against the Comoros Islands. But just... Uh, a minute before the game, there was a tweet put out by the uh, Gabon Federation which said that uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, along with Mario Lemina and other players who had contracted COVID-19 earlier in the tournament, had, were suffering from some very light heart problems. Uh, since then, we've heard that it's just complications due to the COVID-19 infections that they had and CAF actually stepped in to stop those players from being put on the team sheet because none of them played and none of them were on the substitutes bench either. So for Gabon, it can only get better really because Mario Lemina is of course a very influential player in midfield, perhaps where Gabon are lacking just a little bit of control in the first two games that we've seen. And of course, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the captain and the Arsenal superstar. And before them, Borussia Dortmund. Well, it goes without saying that he has been one of the most deadly strikers in Europe in the last couple of years. So his return, Lamina's return, will only be good news for Gabon. But of course, Selena, to be taken with a pinch of salt if those returns happen at all. Indeed, they will have to wait and see. And meanwhile, also in Group B, Morocco booked their spot in the knockouts with a 2-0 win against Comoros. Uh, thanks to an early goal fired by Salim Amala and a second slotted in by Zakaria Aboukal in the 89th minute. Though the Atlas Lions will be far from happy with that performance after wasting several opportunities, including a missed penalty by Youssef N. Nesri. That's how football is. Anyone can miss a penalty. We missed a lot of chances. I hope that we won't miss these kinds of chances in front of the goal next time. I promise the fans that we will come back stronger and get the results. We won't make these kinds of mistakes again. 
So, Simon, maximum points for Morocco so far, but they'll be wanting to shape up ahead of facing bigger teams in the knockouts after some rather sloppy chances in front of goal this evening. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the feeling we get with this uh, Moroccan team is that they're not playing to their full potential. It's very laboured. It's uh, quite slow. It could be a lot uh, more fluidity uh, going through their play. It could be a lot quicker. And it's just not the case. Now, it must be said in Enesiri's defence, in Munir's defence, these are players who had COVID at the start of the competition and who are just returning to the team because Enesiri, the Sevilla striker, should, of course, be starting every game for the Atlas uh, Lions uh, later later in the competition. Uh, in terms of Morocco's uh, play overall, well, they scored early, as you mentioned, but after that, they really struggled. In the second half, however, you saw uh, the impact of Aid Halilodzic's speech at the interval because Morocco came out with some different intentions, uh, but they were frustrated by Comoros Island's uh, goalkeeper and man of the match, Salim bin Boina, who was simply sensational with some fantastic saves, a double save on the line, and of course, that penalty save, Salim. And so so uh, it was half down to the Comoros Islands uh, star player in goal and half down to their own uh, poor finishing. But what is for sure is that you fear for Morocco when they play against the bigger nations on the continent that if they don't take their chances, then they will be heading out of the competition. Simon Harding for us there in the capital. We'll be back to you uh, later on in the show. Let's now move on to the other group that has been playing this evening. That is Group C, which has been left wide open after the results uh, today. Senegal and Guinea are both on four points and a step closer to reaching the last 16. They played out a goalless draw. Malali, meanwhile, are also still in the running for qualification after coming from behind to beat Zimbabwe 2-1 and seal three points. Four best third-place teams will be going through to the knockout stages. James Asino was watching those games for us in Bafusam. Well, this wraps up match day two in Group B. And as it stands, uh, everything is pretty much still up for grabs, although uh, only just, uh, of course. Uh, earlier on in the afternoon, we watched Senegal face off against Guinea, a game uh, that on paper looked very exciting. We thought there'd be plenty of attack. That was not the case. It turned out to be very defensive uh, and the big opportunities were absolutely just missed. Uh, very, very, uh, just a very uh, disappointing performance, of course, uh, for them and for their fans as the teams leave uh, with a goalless draw. Something, of course, uh, that Senegal was looking to try and put right after only just uh, securing a 1-0 win in their opening game. Uh, and, of course, if they want to try and impress others and show that they uh, are the number one ranked African team, uh, according to FIFA, then they're going to have to show a, a lot more, of course, uh, in the next games. And, of course, uh, they did also uh, want to try and qualify uh, and get maximum points to not have to worry about their next game before uh, trying to get into the round of 16. Uh, we do have to say, though, uh, of course, that for Senegal, uh, this is twice that they've played uh, at 2 p.m. in the scorching heat uh, here in Bafusan, making it very tough uh, on the players. Uh, Guinea put on a good fight uh, in their first game and did so again today. Didn't uh, manage to find the net, but they did also, of course, uh, keep Senegal away from it, which is, uh, of course, a victory in a sense for them. But they also, uh, therefore, leave with four points. Um, but, of course, uh, there's still plenty that can be done. Uh, and after their game, we spoke to uh, Fudi Monsari. He's a former uh, international uh, Guinean player and he's got a lot of things that he still wants to teach his team, teach his players uh, so they can try and go further into this Africa Cup of Nations. We could have even won the match. We had more chances than Senegal. But honestly, we're very happy. I think if we work even harder than that, we'll go as far as possible. We didn't burn ourselves out. We did what had to be done today. Of course, we wanted to win the match, but we got a draw. That's not bad at all. Well, after that, we got to see Zimbabwe face off against Malawi, the two teams who'd lost out uh, in their opening games. Uh, Zimbabwe, who had put on a solid performance in their first one and looked to retain that form uh, at first, uh, they managed to put in what was a brilliant header from Ismail Wadi off what was uh, as well an excellent cross. Uh, now, the team led by Knowledge Mustona, uh, the country's uh, star striker and a very experienced player, of course, looked very strong. Uh, he himself really led the team and made them uh, really looked like they were bound to be 
bound for glory, uh, really. Uh, but however, after Malawi managed to equalise, well, all of that really just went down the drain. Uh, in the second half, uh, Malawi put in a second goal, uh, and that was due to a defensive error, a very, very poor defensive error uh, from Zimbabwean, the Zimbabwean side. Uh, and that really showed how they had really sunk uh, after that. And it was really a game uh, of two halves. This now means uh, that Zimbabwe have a minute chance of making it through to the knockout stages. Uh, but uh, Malawian fans are, of course, delighted and can see their team going very, very far. It happened by magic. Uh, we knew that if we were playing with Gaba, Gaba is a very good player. We knew that he's going to score. As long as you give him half a chance, he's going to score. So we are very happy. I'm playing Malawi, Malawi Davido, Malawi Davido, Malawi Davido, Malawi Davido, Malawi Davido. Well, as things stand, Senegal are on four points, Guinea are on four, and Malawi are behind with three, while Zimbabwe uh, are still on none. Now, next up, uh, Senegal will face off against Malawi, uh, while Guinea face off against Zimbabwe. Uh, this is all the last games, the third match day in Group B, to come on Tuesday. Now let's take a look forward to what to expect on Saturday as Group D play their second round of group games. Egypt will be hungry to get points under their belt as they face Guinea-Bissau. Group B leaders Nigeria meet, Group D, sorry, leaders Nigeria will be hoping to secure qualification in the last 16 as they play against Sudan. Despite a chaotic start with several players out with COVID and the sacking of their manager shortly before the tournament, the Super Eagles turned heads after an impressive 1-0 win against Egypt in their opening game. Though their coach said there would be no complacency and the team would not be underestimating their opponent, Sudan. Sudan is not a pushover. More so they are on one point. We are three points. We want to consolidate on that. And they will be pushing more harder to you know, have a chance to, to qualify. And uh, we have discussed with uh, as the backroom staff and the entire team together. So tomorrow we, we, you will see a different, maybe a different tactics, maybe the same. Heavyweights, heavyweight, sorry. Egypt, meanwhile, are under pressure to improve in their opening game, their, after their opening game and pick up some points. The Pharaohs' opening performance against Nigeria was disappointing with their talisman Mohamed Salah looking isolated in large parts of the game. Liverpool forward has struggled to reproduce for his country the amazing form seen week in, week out in the Premier League this season. The odds, though, are still heavily in Egypt's favour against Guinea-Bissau. Uh, the Egyptian coach uh, said he admitted the seven-time AFCON champions needed to raise their game. Oh, Egypt. Uh, uh, do our best to, of course, uh, create the right impression in front of our fans. Uh, last game did not went well, especially in the first, first half. But the next game, everything will be different for sure. So an opportunity for the Super Eagles to soar ahead in Group D and a crunch game for Egypt to underline their contender credentials. Nigeria are, of course, top of that group with three points, followed by Guinea, Bissau and Sudan on one point apiece after their opening draw. Egypt, meanwhile, trail on no points. Before we leave you for this evening, let's cross back to our sports editor, Simon Harding, for his take on the tournament so far. Simon, as we discussed uh, yesterday, this AFCON has gotten off uh, to quite a slow start, but we're finally starting to see some more action and, most importantly, some more goals. Absolutely. Uh, more goals scored in the first uh, two days of the second round of group stages than in the entire first round with some uh, phenomenal performances, including that of Cameroon, of course, who beat Ethiopia 4-1. Uh, so you do get the feeling that teams are now starting to find their feet uh, here in uh, Cameroon and starting to put together the work, the preparation before the tournament, as we know, was uh, very short. Another uh, piece of information I can also bring you, Selena, an important one, is that CAF dismissed uh, claims made by Tunisia to have their game with Mali replayed. We remember uh, the farcical scenes which saw the referee blow uh, for the end of the match twice before reaching the 90 uh, minutes. Uh, that referee is in hospital, uh, apparently suffering with a heat stroke, though, of course, uh, to be taken with a pinch of salt as we wait for official uh, confirmation. But certainly this Africa Cup of Nations starting uh, to gear up. Egypt and Nigeria will have tough games to try 
and cement their position in the next uh, round and heavyweights are expected to perform because uh, for the big teams uh, here in Cameroon it's not been as easy as expected. We saw that with Ghana, we saw Morocco struggle and of course Nigeria will be keen to get six points under their belt which would mean that they qualify for the last 16. A lot more exciting developments to come, I'm sure. Thank you to you, Simon Harding, for us in the capital of Cameroon this evening. And that brings us to the end of our Africa Cup of Nations show. We'll be back on Saturday evening at around 11.40 Yaoundé and Paris time with all the latest results. Until then, stay tuned for more news here on France 24.